Hello recruits! This is Astrodicus with a little tutorial on the public docking area. So the docking area is available for anybody who has the achievement of getting into space to visit. And uh, it is actually part of your campaign to get to Mars. So let's talk about the Orbital B. Orbital B is our workhorse. Uh, it will be used for lots of missions such as uh, gathering asteroids and um, shooting at orbital debris. And the Orbital B is uh, loosely based on a couple of concepts you may have seen uh, in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. But guess what? The Orbital B was actually designed by the same person who designed uh, the special effects for the somewhat lackluster movie uh, Independence Day Resurgence. So the resemblance between our Orbital B and their Orbital B is not coincidental because it's the same designer. And actually, I sent him the, uh, the, the plans for the Orbital B, uh, the initial sketch that I did. I said, this is cool, let's do this. And um, uh, like about six years ago, so he drew a couple of concepts and uh, the first concept, which is the one, this one, uh, it's a company called Wide Shot in Germany is the one that we ended up using. Um, it's beautiful. So uh, as you see, I'm uh, flying around. Uh, I'm recording uh, this audio after. Uh, left and right on your keyboard is left and right in space and forward and back is forward and back. If you shift jump, that goes straight up from your point of view. If you, uh, uh, sorry, straight down, it's like crouching. And if you hit the space bar, you'll go straight up. Now, if you use the right mouse button, you can rotate a certain way while holding down the right mouse button. I just suggest you try it. It's very intuitive once you get into it. And if you use the left mouse button, you will also um, turn in a specific way. Uh, much better for you to try it. Uh, you may have seen me just flying all over the place. And right there, I was demonstrating how to target something uh, that is orbital debris in space. And uh, now let's talk about exactly what is it that we are doing uh, in space uh, and uh, how high are we and, and things like that. So uh, the International Space Station uh, is uh, traveling at a very uh, high rate of speed, uh, about 7.6 kilometers per second. Please make certain that you use metric whenever you're studying math uh, and not imperial. You can convert it at the end. Don't worry about the miles per hour. 7.66 kilometers per second should just become intuitive to you if we really get right down to it. Um, I still will do the calculation to Imperial in my head whenever I can, but uh, a good way to think about uh, kilometers per hour is to think if I go 100 kilometers an hour, I will get 100 kilometers in an hour. I mean, that's... Uh, that's cool and the distance to the lake I go to in the summertime is 200 kilometers so it takes me two hours and 100 kilometers an hour is about the speed on a highway and that already works so uh, the uh, International Space Station that's in space right now uh, we had the good pleasure of working with Chris Hadfield for a couple of years and two weeks in person um, because he was training for his mission uh, is is uh, traveling at 7.66 kilometers per second and it travels around the earth therefore uh, every 92 minutes it sees a sunrise and so the daytime lasts for 45 minutes and the nighttime lasts for 45 minutes and uh, of course in our game time things are much faster um, think of orbit like this if you throw a ball very very quickly it will go very very far I was pointing out Orlando there in the video just before and now I'm circling around the earth if you throw a ball all as fast as you can it'll eventually go into orbit and that's why the International Space Station goes so fast if you don't throw something fast enough ie blast it into orbit fast enough it will fall back to earth on a parabolic trajectory whether it's the end of a football field or it's the end of your block or it's the end of your city or it's the end of the country or it's the end of the ocean or it's the very far side of the earth once you get to the far side of the earth and it comes back round to you you're in orbit so uh, now obviously I'm having some fun uh, here uh, looking around. I'm pointing out the fact that we also have these uh, Mars cyclers uh, or, or planetary cyclers coming into view and uh, you can travel towards them. Now, in a completely realistic scenario, 
if you fired yourself straight towards the earth that's not the best way to land on the earth the best way is to fire yourself in the exact opposite direction of your orbit because that of the direction that you're going in orbit like here if i fire this way i will actually uh, lose velocity and start sinking back to the earth so here we are docking with the shuriken class cycler uh, the shield there is based on a michio kaku uh, lecture that he gives in his book physics of the impossible about how to create a shield that will shield you from uh, all sorts of nasty solar flares and electromagnetic radiation even other other things uh, we're using a carbon nanofiber uh, shield which is a lattice and then it is taking plasma which is a new type of engine for another time uh, it is a, a talk for another time. It is taking plasma, which is electromagnetic particles, like stuff that flies off the sun. We, we've got plasma engines going into production very soon. They can travel, uh, they can uh, take us to Mars much faster. Uh, so probably by the time that this game takes place in 2035, they will exist. So uh, uh, that plasma is taken off into the sides and it uh, uh, forms a shield against radiation that can kill you. So we also have Rhino Chill here. Rhino Chill is a real thing. You can Google it. Uh, that'll put you to sleep or in a torpor for two weeks. So you can go to sleep for two weeks, wake up. And in a six-month journey, wake up uh, for a couple of days and go back to sleep again. Uh, the idea there is that you don't want to be awake for that whole time. It's not very pleasant and you have to eat a lot more. So if we uh, sleep you down, bring you down, you can get up, do some exercise every couple of weeks and go back to sleep. <coughs> which is actually a real technology that you can that's being used in the hospitals right now and that NASA of course looks at. So, uh here we've got our map that you get uh one of the bonuses you get at the end of this uh screen is that you can see the entire solar system and all of the uh star rangers uh Mars cyclers that are are uh or or pardon me planetary cyclers that are going around the solar system. And it's pretty fun just to look at this map. So we're going to pick somewhere to visit very shortly. There's the asteroid belt. And there's lots of information here. There's Saturn. Of course, the Cassini mission, which took all these beautiful pictures of Saturn, is ending. They're going to burn it up. They don't want to leave any... Uh, I think the reason they're going to burn it up is they don't want to leave any contaminants anywhere. And that's happening. Uh, it's April the 4th, 2017. April the 12th, 2017. That's happening very soon. So uh, there's a Jupiter cycler that will go out to uh, Jupiter orbit and back. By the way, that that actually in real life, uh, to get to Jupiter and back, Jupiter is much, much farther away. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jupiter is... I'm going to just Google that. Oh, Silence. How far is Jupiter from the sun? 588 million kilometers away. And uh, uh, that is very fun. Uh, that is very far. So that's it for the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.